In this lecture, we will learn about Koch's regression with time varying covariates. In the previous lecture, we did talk about Koch's with time varying covariate in the situation where, and we look at effect of cabbage over time on survival. And the cabbage group, a patient treated with cabbage, the surgery, uh, versus a medically treated patient. And then we see the effect of cabbage changed over time. So one solution for that is we cut follow-up time and then compute two different hazard ratio. Okay. So you might see a hazard ratio is less than one in this period and cabbage is working and we thought hazard ratio become greater than one in this period and then cabbage stopped working. Okay. And another time varying covariate approach in caucus regression is in the situation whether the patient change exposure status over time. A motivating example for today is from famous Stanford heart transplant data. This data set has become very famous among statisticians. Okay. And this is a cohort study. And okay, population is a patient and who have severe heart disease. And then time zero for this cohort study is when their name is listed for heart transplant. Okay, so all patients in this study and their names are listed uh, for heart transplant. Okay, and patient number one, and then this person um, received heart transplant in day five, and then uh, survived until a year from uh, time zero. And then patient two, this patient unfortunately died in day three before receiving heart transplant. And we are interested in assessing effect of transplant prolonging patient survival. This is the data for Stanford heart transplant. And you go to Cox regression, right? And then put the time and uh, status and 0 for 1 for death and 0 for survival and covariate in this case is transplant so um, typical survival analysis we have only one exposure variable right and then this variable when you go back to like to the data set and one patient are entered one patient data is entered in one row these id three and four patient and these patients accorded as one recognizing having heart transplantation okay and then typical survival analysis ignore uh, timing of transplantation so uh, this patients actually received transplantation day one and then died on day 16 and this patient received transplant day 36 and died on day 39 and so typical survival analysis does not really recognize this variable and therefore entire time period from time zero to the day they die these two patients died zero to day 16 or day zero to day 39 these patients are considered as having transplant from day zero yeah. so that the difficulty analyzing data where the patient change exposure status over time so we can't really use this method so if you ignore timing of receiving transplant and do typical Cox regression get the regular one and uh, let's see what happened okay if I transplant and in this analysis and you will you see receiving heart transplantation reduce uh, mortality by 71.4 percent which is statistically significant and if you draw a couple of Meyer curve so you have a huge advantage of having heart transplantation. And the rest of this lecture, we will talk about if this is correct analysis. So this is a capital Maya graph, and we just did with SPSS. And the problem with this is this capital Maya curve, we are recognizing 31 patients never have a transplant at day zero, and 69 patients actually did have a transplant at day zero. This is a wrong assumption, right? Because uh, this is an event history graph and for this data. So pink is a period, showing a period before they receive transplant. And then 
timing shown by red is the time after they actually did receive transplant. So as you see, at the time zero, not many people actually did receive transplant. And so uh, it's not the 69. And 69 is exaggerated. So what is a 69? 69 is the numbers of patients who eventually did receive transplant. Okay, so it's, it's wrong. So if you go back to uh, the graph showing what actually happened and faithfully count number of patients, okay, at the time zero, how many actually did receive transplant and how many didn't, and then this is a number. So at, so this shows actual numbers. At day two, there are six patients in who had received transplant in 94 who hadn't. And day three and nine patients alive at risk and did receive transplant and 90 didn't receive transplant. And day five, 14 patients are alive and had received transplant up to that time and 82 are alive and hadn't received transplant. Okay, so if you re redo Kaplan-Meier curve, based on actual numbers who did or didn't receive transplant and you will see this Kaplan-Meier graph. So surprisingly, effect of transplant went away. Okay. Hazard ratio is nearly 1 and then p-value is uh, much greater, and which is 0 0.83. So based on this, we don't conclude transplant is effective to prolong patient life. Okay, so only the difference between this curve and this curve is this curve and they ignore the timing of receiving transplant. The mistake with this analysis is the model did not consider actual timing of transplant. Okay? And they, um, so they considered patient who eventually received transplant are as if they did receive transplant at day zero. Okay, so that was a wrong assumption. So let's do the math to make sure you really understand this concept. This ignored actual timing of transplant. So this one, and okay, and you know, we know when actually patient did receive transplant. So the time patient received transplant. So ID number one patient and died without transplant at eight months, and ID number two has a transplant at the 10 months, so this is a 10 months point, and then died at the 20 months, so it's 20 and this is 10. And then ID number three had a transplant at the 15 month, and then died at 30 month. Okay. And then based on these two scenarios where, where one, you ignore timing of receiving transplant, and then one, you consider timing of receiving transplant, and compute rate ratio for the treatment effect. Okay. And for time fixed exposure method, okay, and you count all this red as follow-up time for transplant group. So that add up to uh, 50. Okay, and then two death occur in the transplant group. So that death, two deaths occur. So 2 is a numerator, divide by 50. So rate of death would be 0 0.04 per person month. And for non-transplant group, and this is only one person, and then this person died and uh, after 8 months. The so rate would be 1 over 8 and 0 0.125 per person month. And then you take a ratio, and rate ratio become 0 0.32. So this shows there is 68% risk reduction of death by the transplant and when you consider timing of transplant and then follow-up time you only consider this red uh, period for transplant group which is 25 and two death occur here and here so numerator is 2 2 divided by 25 and rate of death would be 0 0.05 for treatment group and then this pink okay id2 id3 patient and they both did have time without having transplant. So this time we count this period as non-transplant group. So numerator denominator for non-transplant group would be 8 from ID1 and 10 from ID2 and 15 from ID3. 
So that would be 33. So 1 over 33. And rate of death is 0 0.03 per person month. When you take a ratio of the two, and rate ratio is 2.67. So this indicates actually risk increase 2.67 uh, fold risk increase by transplant compared to non-transplant. Okay. So by ignoring timing of transplantation, okay, and you show the effect of treatment, but if you consider the timing of transplantation, and then uh, you actually consider the transplantation as a hazard, okay, and not the benefit. So uh, results greatly change by uh, considering timing of change of exposure status. And so we are actually going to do this analysis and avoid yeah, this wrong analysis. Okay. This is called as time in model bias. What the time in model bias mean is that we artificially inflate the effect of the treatment because of the fact that these patients have to live longer to receive a treatment. So the observed effect of the treatment is not really due to the effect of transplant to prolong patient life. That the other way, that is the other way, uh, in order for these patients to receive transplant and they had to live longer. And so I call it chicken and egg bias. We don't know if the chicken is before egg or egg is before chicken, right? And so, um, so why we call this with this complex name of time in model? And that means the patient and who receive a transplant in day five, and this patient, in order for this patient to be considered as a transplant group, and this patient have to survive up to that time. So the time before the transplantation is considered immortal time. This patient cannot die. To receive transplant. If this immortal time is counted in the denominator of a transplant group, which is this analysis, okay, we artificially create benefit of the treatment. Instead, this immortal time have to be considered in non-exposure group and to assess treatment effect more accurately. And this type of bias occur numerous studies in pharmacoepidemiology and I put the three examples here. The first, the effect of inhaled corticosteroid use on COPD. So they follow the patient over time and then time zero is defined at a particular time point and then some patients start using corticosteroid and some do not. And analysis use a Cox regression, and then they ignore the timing of the patient start using corticosteroid. And therefore, this immortal time was considered as uh, they received the treatment, and so that artificially create effect of the treatment corticosteroid. And so, time ignore analysis ignoring this timing of starting corticosteroid and the risk was 0 0.73 indicating 27 percent risk reduction using corticosteroid okay and then as someone else repeat the study and correctly considering timing of using corticosteroid and they did not show any effect of the drug and similarly the cohort study assessing effect of statin use on the mortality among patients with acute coronary syndrome. So this was a cohort study and then time zero was defined as a specific time point and they perform Cox regression. Okay? And then uh, not everybody start using statin. So some people start using statin middle of the study period and some didn't. So what they did is compute is odds ratio. So odds ratio, all you know is whether they did or they didn't have exposure and whether they died or they didn't. So uh, logistic regression clearly ignore timing of use of statin. And then it's uh, concluded effect of statin, benefit of statin use uh, wrongly. Then someone else repeated analysis with the Cox regression and considering timing of using statin and they did not show any difference. Okay? And famous example uh, published in Annals of Internal Medicine, do Oscar winners live longer than the less successful peers? 
And what they did is uh, they conducted Koch's regression. Okay, and then time zero is birthday of uh, actors. And by the way, cohort consists actors or actress and who are nominated to Oscar. And some, uh, some won Oscar and some didn't. Okay. And Oscar winners classified as zero and non winner no winner is classified as one okay and then analysis they ignore timing of winning oscar and as they consider uh, winners uh, won the oscar at the birth and then they showed how the ratio of 23 indicated oscar non-winners actually have 23 times larger risk of dying than oscar winners and someone else repeated study and consider oscar winners only for the time after they won the Oscar. So if um, we have Jack Nicholas, I don't know when is the first time he won the Oscar, uh, but let's say the age of 50, and then uh, time before 50 years is considered him as known Oscar winners, and uh, time after 50 in the model considered uh, Jack Nicholas as Oscar winner. And then, uh, reanalysis did not show any uh, benefit by winning Oscar on their survival. So clearly, this is a chicken and egg bias, right? Because uh, in order to win Oscar, they probably needed more experience. So they had to live longer to win Oscar. So it's hard for a teenager to win Oscar. Okay? Um, so that was it. And Van Wall Raven uh, conducted a literature review of nine prominent medical journals between 1998 and 2002 and found that 41% of reported observational studies using survival analysis were susceptible to immortal time bias. And I'm, from my experience, I think it's more. So many papers and they use survival analysis and data are from cohort study and you need to pay attention whether the exposure is happening middle of uh, follow-up or at the beginning of the follow-up. Okay. So if it's happening at the middle of a follow-up and then they cannot use regular Cox regression, they have to use Cox regression with time varying covariate.